Ole Miss Rebels and Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin last year, 10-2 and two in the regular season. Of course, Matt Corral gets hurt in the Sugar Bowl, and they end up losing that one. Uh, post-game win expectancy for them last year was actually 9-3 and three as opposed to 10-2. and two. But, uh, but they got that win, so it is what it is. Returning production is number 111 here, so that's definitely not good. But they they maybe rectified that with a really good transfer class. Um, as far as roster strength, I mean, they're number 17 in the country. Defense, number 27. That's still not great in the SEC, but, uh, but pretty good overall nationally. Uh, their rushing success rate was putrid last year, number 120. Just awful. Uh, but all the offensive numbers were good. Offensive numbers were definitely awesome. Uh, we'll start off with the offense. You are changing OC. Jeff Lebby leaves for Oklahoma. That brings in Charlie Weiss Jr. and John David Bakers. They're going to continue this up-tempo pace. They were number four in offensive plays per game last year. They were only number 58 in points per play. So something to look out for. They run a lot of plays, but they don't necessarily score a ton. So USC transfer quarterback Jackson Dart didn't exactly pull away from Luke Altmaier in the uh, in the spring the running back room lost Connor and Ely, but they do bring in Zach Evans and Ulysses Bentley the fourth. The offensive line does look stacked here. Uh, four new transfer wide receivers to pair along with Jonathan Mingo, who's going to be the uh, the bell cow of the wide receiver core for sure. Uh, along with that, they're going to have to improve number 70 in points per scoring opportunity. Again, that is drives inside the 40-yard line. Uh, you got to be able to score when you get down there. I mean, bottom line. Ole Miss has got to be able to score when they get those opportunities, and they just didn't last year. Uh, Moving over to the defense, you are losing your defensive coordinator. DJ Durkin heads over to Texas A&M, so now you have Maurice Crum and Chris Partridge. Um, At least four of the eight defensive transfers could start. There are several good returning players. Uh, You got defensive end Johnson. You got the defensive back Reese and, and another Johnson there. Uh, defense was number fifth, uh, 115 in total scoring opportunities, but number 44 in points per scoring opportunity. Uh, this is the definition of a bend-don't-break defense. Now, will they continue that this year? Uh, they were able to get some turnovers in their own territory last year. Um, I'm curious. I'm really curious. They are projected favorites in eight games. Uh, looking at the win total here, 7.5. It's juiced to the over at minus 140. Conference odds, they are 40-1. to one. To win the division, they are 14-1. to one. Keys to the season here. They went for it in FBS high 40 times last year. They converted 60% of them. Will they be as aggressive if the quarterback play is not up to the corral levels? Uh, Quarterback is everything when it comes to Lane Kiffin's offense. What does the offense look like without Jeff Levy? That's the other question. Levy, widely known to be kind of a de facto head coach in Oxford, uh, new offense coordinator, transfer skill talent everywhere. How is this going to gel? That's another key to the season. And this other part, defense was kind of turning under Durkin. Uh, The depth still looks like it's recovering from probation, though. And as strong as the numbers say, as far as roster strength, again, it's not great for the SEC. How big of a loss is a guy like defensive end Sam Williams and the linebacker Chance Campbell? That's another key to the season here. I've got them going over the win total. I've got them at 8-4. and Uh, I've got... You know, wins in all four of the non-conference games. I don't think you're going to have any real trouble, maybe at Georgia Tech, but it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Troy's going to be interesting with John Summerall's first game there. Uh, Along with that, I've got a loss to Kentucky. I've got a loss to LSU, a loss at Texas A&M, and I've got a loss to Alabama. But that includes wins uh, against Auburn, a win at Arkansas. I mean, these are are tough games, very, very tough games. But I kind of trust Lane Kiffin to get this thing done. Uh, Eight and four seems... Pretty reasonable to me. Uh, I think I think fans in Oxford would be really happy with an eight and four season, especially with Jackson Dart coming in and all that new skill talent trying to find a, a way to gel. Maybe, uh, but tough road, tough road games at Texas A and M, at Arkansas. Uh, you do have Vandy thrown in there at LSU. Could be very interesting with you know their first trip to visit Brian Kelly. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, they could certainly win those games that I've got losses. They could lose some of those games that I've got as wins. So anywhere between six and six and eight and four looks to be about right, um, but I've got them at eight and four. So I've, I've got them going over slightly. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.